My guest today is Tobias Zarles. Tobias, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, thank you very much. Excellent seeing you again. Excellent seeing you. Um, I wanted to cut right into this topic that uh, I find fascinating. Um, you're, you've got uh, purple hair, you've got funny glasses, <laughs> mm-hmm. funny to me anyway. Uh, Yesterday you were wearing a dress. Some of these things are unusual I'm for someone. dress today. You know? this is, oh, uh, it, 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 uh, it counts, it counts. I got in the woman's clothing touching. It's not doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you were, you, you were, you're someone with a Y chromosome. That's unusual, some of these things. Um, it depends on what circles you go into. Okay, in my circle. I, I don't know if you know about this, me, but about, I don't know if you know this about me, but I, I'm an old guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, for some of us, it's unusual. Let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, well, gender in your life. Yeah. Um, I would say that it's not unusual for my gender, which is non-binary. Okay. So I am neither uh, male nor female. I am in between. Mm-hmm. Um, there's lots of different terms that people can be in between, uh, lots of different ways that people can identify. Uh, I personally kind of like non-binary as the main way to identify, even though it acts itself as more of an umbrella term as literally not gender binary. Um, I also kind of like gender queer in general, but um, that's a, a more fluid thing that changes. Okay. Uh, so we'll define what uh, when you say I'm gender non-binary. What does that mean? Um, as I said, it, it's, it's really that simple that um, I am not male. I am not female. I consider myself uh, transsexual, okay. um, but transgender. Um, all of the above uh, terms can apply, but um, I, you know, the, the people who are non-binary could choose to identify as that. They could choose not to. Um, really depends on uh, where they come from. It's uh, something that is legally recognized, and I forgot exactly how many states in the U.S., um, okay. but I'm in California where it is recognized. We are currently in Washington State where it's also uh, legally recognized as an option. It is on my birth certificate. It's on my driver's license. Not on my passport. It's not federally recognized uh, in the okay. U.S. yet, but that's a different political issue. Um, and as a non-binary person, I use gender-neutral pronouns. So you would say uh, to buy a they use they them pronouns okay as opposed to he she or him her that's exactly sort of um okay and uh, when i first met you which was gosh five or six years ago uh i didn't know that about you uh, did you know that about yourself five six eight years ago i didn't know that about myself for okay. sure um this has definitely been a journey um therapy has changed my life mm-hmm. uh, i started therapy maybe three years ago um it was around that time that i I really was starting to realize that um and uh now that i have uh uh, been out and identifying as non-binary for a couple years now i think it it really is affirming gives me gender euphoric moments opposed to gender dysphoric Uh, i am happy to share i've had anxiety my whole life and since i have come out i have realize how much of my anxiety was caused by gender dysphoria and this trying to fit in and try to be a man that I really wasn't and letting myself be comfortable uh, not trying to be a man anymore has made me feel much 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 better Uh, also uh, hormones are amazing okay and uh so if i can summarize this journey of the last six years or so there was something that you knew that was about you that was just uh you were uncomfortable with and you didn't know what that was then you identified that to yourself and then you uh announced it or articulated it to the world um more or less you know it's definitely more complicated than that i certainly mm-hmm. think that um i was not taught that non-binary was a thing that you could be it okay. honestly took me meeting another non-binary person mm-hmm. Um, and becoming friends with them to even realize, oh, wait, uh, this is a thing. And as I started talking with them about the issues, I started really, really relating to the issues. So much so that um, I started questioning and realizing myself, oh, that's actually been the way that I've been feeling my entire life. And maybe not quite feeling that, oh, I'm not the uh, stereotypical transgender experience of, I've been a woman trapped in a man's body me feeling that oh that means i'm not trans but in actuality that uh i was just neither and and neither was properly fit and it was just easy for me to cover and get by as male it takes uh active effort on my part in order to be affirmed in my gender um and it's effort that i'm choosing to make uh that has greatly helped my life okay and i think it's uh, significant to note that you are married you're married to a woman 
you have children that you fathered as a uh, <laughs> uh, biologically. Um, you know, I think that that's not important. Actually, well, I think it, it says that you haven't abandoned the male side of you. That's why I say it's, is that. Am I incorrect in saying that? Uh, yeah, I think you are. Okay, tell actually, me, tell, let's talk about it. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, people can have families of all different uh, kinds and genders and gender combinations. Um, and my son is adoptive as well. Um, and I'm oh, I a huge supporter okay. of adopting kids. And um, as someone who knows a lot of queer families of various different dynamics, um, I think uh, a lot of people place an overemphasis on... Uh, biological genetics when it comes to family structure and how one uh, lives their life. Okay, fair enough. Thanks for educating me on that. Uh, the reason I wanted you on this show, this is a show about technology generally, but we're not really mm -hmm. talking about technology. However... Well, right to be fair, I am a gender shapeshifter, so that's a pretty, it's pretty technology well, we cool. Demo oh, yeah. That. Oh, well, you're you're, you're, <laughs> you're like getting in part like now. I'm say shapeshifter. I think animorphs. I think we're werewolves. I, I, <laughs> I loved animorphs as a kid. Um, I really, really loved animorphs as a kid. My favorite book series. Uh, maybe kind of a relation, actually, with <laughs> that notion of uh, shapeshifting and changing bodies being something I was interested in. Uh, but I say that no joke, like it's okay. a technology thing, right? That's yeah. um, like hormones are an amazing technology oh, okay. as of so now, you are, right? And I'm, physically yeah, changing I'm literally physically changing my body. I'm literally yeah. going through laser treatments and removing, you know, my body hair and facial oh, hair. Like okay. this is, uh, there is a technology aspect, I think, to being transgender for sure. Oh, okay. That wasn't going that way, but uh, you want to share some, some of the technology that goes into this? I mean, uh, you know, the, for medical stuff, right? It I'm not the uh, the expert, and it depends okay. on exactly that person's body, what they want to do, um, uh, and it's certainly uh, technology is not required to um, be or identify as transgender. But um, as someone into technology and yeah. into gadgets, I'm in that in all aspects of my life. Okay, uh, where I was going was the there's a whole technology community and you and i are a part of that and in fact we're sitting here among a, a, if i turn the camera around you would see hundreds of technologists sitting at computers and writing code mm -hmm. um, has it uh, affected your relationship with that community and um, so how you know yes it has okay um there's definitely people who i am more strongly bonded with um, as i've become more and more out and be able to talk with and talk about things that I wasn't comfortable talking about at work before, okay. and um, unfortunately, the opposite is also true. And um, one of the things that uh, I've made the choice is that I'm going to prioritize my own comfort over other people's um, discomfort at my existence. And the more that I am out there and the more that I talk about who I am and what that means and people like me, the more that I hope that I can show others that I'm just a person who loves technology just like pretty much everyone else in this room. Right. Do you think there's any difference in the way that the tech community has reacted to you versus just the world at large? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, tech is definitely full of a, a lot of people who are deeply seeped in a culture of toxic masculinity. Um, there's a lot of reasons why uh, tech statistically has a lot of members in that, but um, it is also a self-reinforcing cycle. Okay. Um, and it's definitely something hard to break out of. Uh, a lot of nerds like to think of as themselves as, you know, the outsiders, you know, we're separate from the jocks, you know, we're the ones who take everybody. But unfortunately, tech is full of a lot of people who get really into being in their own kind of exclusive club. And um, uh, you'll find people often talking about, or I'm the artist, I'm the best, they'll use these kinds of terms that on their face sound, oh, awesome, I like being that. but then you'll look at a lot of tech spaces and you'll realize, wow, these spaces are not very diverse. And when you start questioning why that is, you realize that it's not just that, oh, people who are not diverse aren't interested in those spaces, but often when they try to get interested, they get turned off and pushed away hmm. by the culture that's inside of it. Okay. Um, you know, you'll note that a lot of women in tech uh, have to change jobs constantly uh, and number one reason for having to do that is to get out of previous toxic co-worker environments sure. and um, a lot of people who are um, you know, frankly 
non-straight white males end up leaving tech sooner than straight white males do, much, much sooner hmm. because of the culture there. And again, this is something that we hope to change and something at Microsoft in particular has made a strong stance to be inclusive and to try and change. And, uh, you know, we've made great strides, but there's a lot of work to still be done. So you think it has, we've made progress in the last few years? Oh, certainly. The fact that I can have this conversation with you right now is okay. huge progress. I mean, just think about, let's say, 10 years ago, there was still even a debate if um, two people of the same gender could even legally be allowed to be married, right? right. Um, and now there's kind of more of, a, at least in a U.S.-centric point of view, a national focus on the transgender conversation and what transgender people are about. Mm. But um, I'm very hopeful that... Um, people will again realize at the end that you know we're just people and uh, whether someone's you know trans or cis they're just part of another member of society uh, there's a lot of us that grew up in a different era and uh, didn't think about this when I was younger we just it just uh, uh, most of us just it wasn't a, a topic that came to mind it w wasn't um, allowed to be discussed and that's the, there's a lot of reasons for that mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, people like me I'm trying to be better at it what can you do? What, what advice could give me to be more accepting, to be more inclusive, uh, to, for people like you? And then I know it's a, it's not yeah. just you. It's the there's a whole uh, there's there's uh, homosexuals, there's transgender, there's gender fluids, and there's uh, too many to list. Yeah, yeah definitely, <laughs> that, definitely that, that, too that, many to that list. Non-traditional. Yeah, uh, um, I, th I think one of the main things is um, thinking about the words traditional. Thinking about like, oh, okay. this is a new thing. It it might be new in a conversation that you're hearing, but um, people like me have been around uh, forever. And okay. uh, I would encourage you to go out and and do some research along the lines. And one of the things that I like to point out, um, you know, this, this might. It seemed like an extreme example, but um, a lot of us, when talking about World War II, we were taught historical images of Nazis burning books. I'm sure you've heard and seen pictures about, oh, these Nazi rallies burning books. Um, and people don't realize that a lot of those pictures are from specifically the Nazis burning the, um, I, f I forgot how to pronounce it in, ger in German, so I'm not even going to try, but um, it's the Institute of Sexual Health that was one of the pioneering places for transgender people around the world to come and get hormones and gender affirming surgeries and was a world collection of knowledge of uh, transgender uh, people and research from all over the world that existed in Germany in the 30s and one day the Nazis uh, raided and burned uh, everything and unfortunately everyone in that building down to the ground and hundreds of years of transgender history in Western cultures was lost. Mm. And so when we talk about transgender history outside of Western cultures, um, which is of course a, a huge rich history, um, for example, I've been researching a lot of Native American cultures where third genders are actually fairly common and respected. I didn't um, know also the case in a lot of Western cultures, but um, the way the history books have been written that we've been explicitly written out of history. Hmm. So uh, to answer your question, right, I think that um, what cis people can do to be good allies yes. is listen and learn and do some research on the history and um, start questioning uh, assumptions that you might have on where that assumption comes from and what you might think is a historical nominee or what be new might actually be the part of the human condition for thousands of years that's just been repressed for various reasons. Excellent. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you feel we oh, should have? If there's anything of it, yes, there is so many things we haven't talked about. Uh, but it, I, one of the things that I'm coming to do is, is helping people understand, and I'm really happy to answer questions sincerely. So oh, uh, if you have questions, you? Uh, you can find me most easily on Twitter, at Tobias Zarles. Um, I'm sure there'll be a link somewhere in the description of this video as uh -huh. well. Um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, send me some questions. You know, if I, I don't get back to right away, I apologize. But, um, you know, keep paying me. I'll, I'll be happy to help and help you point in the right direction and as well as um, give you some resources or whatever that person who contacts me wants to learn about. I was going to ask you, I, you actually changed your name since I've met you. Was that part of this journey as well? Um, I did that for several reasons. Uh, you know, me and my partner, uh, we made up a new last name um, okay. for our new family, and I'm very, very proud and happy with it. Tobiah, thank you so much. Excellent talking with you.
technology has enabled me to make friends all over the world and realize that I'm not alone.